Hi guys, Tiffany out here, and I am just coming off of an awesome mastery chat where we had the amazing Tisha moderating for us. She was like on point, spectacular. It was a killer <laughs> chat. I've got Ray here too, who is just also awesome. I think at one point I called you a unicorn queen because you are. So let's go first to Tisha. Tisha, talk to us about the chat. How are you feeling right now? Oh, it was so much fun. It was just amazing to see all the fabulous ideas everybody was sharing out. So many things. I wish I had a pen and paper that I could have written down some of the things that people were sharing. It was awesome. So I'm definitely going to have to go back with my pen and paper and write everything down. Always, always. Ray and I joke that we spend at least another hour after we get done with the live broadcast going back in and following up. And then the next day there's more and the next day there's more. Sometimes actually uh, Jeff and I especially will screenshot tweets like I have to remember this and I have to go back and, and do something with this tweet right here because it was so awesome. So yeah, it, it's a little bit of information overload. It's it's great though. It's so, so inspiring. Just so many amazing educators out there doing phenomenal things. So it's what I love about chats is you just get so many new ideas and then just new people to follow that maybe you don't mm -hmm. follow, you haven't followed before. And then so. you learn from each other. Like it's just, we always say, once you're in the mastery chat family, you're never out of the mastery chat family because we just connect and we grow and we learn. And I may be biased, but I do think our mastery chat family is like the bomb diggity. And <laughs> there are some amazing educators in that group. So oh, Ray, you want to talk for a quick second about how you're feeling? No, I just love this chat. Tisha, this was such a great topic. I was exactly what I needed. I've had such a long day. And I was kind of tired coming home and being able to sit and have that incredible hour. There was so much rich discussion. I just, I loved it. I ate it up. I, Tiffany, to your point, I got so many things I have to go follow up with after this. I had tons of messages of, oh, can I have that resource? Oh, can you share that? Oh, we should follow up on this topic. I'm like, okay, that's what I'm going to do after live. After live, I'll go and follow up with all those people I met. Well, and Ray, it's so funny because this chat, like, I created the images a few days ago. I've known the questions for a little while and this chat was so right up your alley. Like every question that came up, I was like, Ray can answer that. Ray's awesome at doing that. So just, I, I love the authentic. I, I think I expected the game question to be my favorite, Tisha. Uh -huh. But question two about authenticity and how you like, helping kids find their passion and connections. And I was just like, oh, this one is the best. How can the chat get better from here? Like, I loved that so much. It was awesome. So Ray, um, did you find yourself like the whole time being like, that's what I do, that's what I do? Well, you know, I still, even with chats that are about kind of my focus, right? I mean, Tisha, you know, you, I mean, you love all of education, but you always have something that's just you just eat it up every single time. And this was one of them, that authentic conversation about how to make classrooms beyond the four walls. That's totally up my alley. And so while it was at my alley, there was still some really great discussions. I actually hosted two chats this week. And a lot of the people that were involved in our Tuesday night chat or our Wednesday night chat were part of this one because they were all along the same lines. And people love getting ideas on how to enhance their classroom when it has to do with authenticity. So it was like just the perfect way to end my Thursday. Oh, I'm so glad. That makes me happy. So Tisha, I, we kind of jumped ahead a little bit into how awesome the chat was, but I know that there's some people watching the video right now who maybe aren't familiar with your story. And as we discovered in the pre-chat video, that there were parts of your story that I was unfamiliar with. So would you mind giving like a 30 second rundown of what brought you to the point with the book that you just wrote and where you are in your career and like what got you to this point right here? Absolutely. So it was about five years ago that I was at a definite low point in my career and I would come home often at night and I would just tell my husband, I just want to work at a coffee shop. I just want to perfect the art of, you know, how they make the beautiful foam on the latte. Like, like that sounds like something that would really, you know, what, what I want to be doing right now. I was just tired. I really was. And so there were a few catalysts that really started me on this new journey of restoring my passion and my love for education. And 
One of those was bringing iPads into my classroom. It was this regional um, grant that all the culinary teachers in our region received. And so when I received this grant, I'm like, okay, well, I want this to be more than a tool for just researching recipes. Like I wanted to transform learning, but I had no clue how to do that. And so I was able to go to some professional development and I discovered Twitter and I started like, my eyes were like open to this whole new world of education that I didn't know existed. And so through those experiences, I just started taking some leaps and I started um, being courageous. And you know, when we, we take those leaps, it, we all know they don't always work out. <laughs> like I, you know, I, I fell flat on my face many times, but what I was finding as I was taking these le leaps and I was, um, trying new things in my classroom, my classroom was beginning to transform and turn into a magical place. And so that was really, um, that's really my story is what happened? What were the keys to transforming my classroom into this magical place where students weren't only immersed, but they were empowered. And I just know that there's a lot of educators out there that are tired, <laughs> that they're burnt out and they are, maybe dreaming about working at a local coffee shop and perfecting the art of making a latte and, and really um, have lost that joy and passion. And so I'm hoping that through sharing my story that maybe um, it'll resonate with some educators and, and help them realize that you can find that joy and passion again and you know, create a magical place in your classroom. You know, Tisha, I'm a little worried because I know you're sitting at a Starbucks right now. So I just want to confirm you're there only for coffee, not to work on your latte skills, correct? I am, but it is kind of, you know, it's symbolic that I'm here right now. <laughs> it, was a, it was a happy coincidence. You know, I, I think I, I mentioned this in the little short video we did before the chat itself, but your story resonates so strongly with so many people, myself included. Our, our good friend Chad Ostrowski included, and hundreds of teachers I've talked to in my career, you hit a point sometimes as an educator where it's just like, where do I go from here? Like, right. I, I, I might be done. I don't know if I can keep doing this as I'm doing. And what you just said, Tisha, I think was so powerful, being willing to take a couple leaps right? Like, and I say this all the time, you know, th there's a lot of value in taking small shifts and, and baby steps. And that's great. Mm -hmm. But I think that there is some power in saying, yep, I'm just going to do it. Here I go. You know what I mean? And just saying like, this is the new adventure I'm on. And it might be an epic fail, or it might be a glorious victory, but it's going to be a movement of some sort. And I think that if we could help other teachers, help other educators see that the leaps they're considering, they just got to take them. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's just, that's what's powerful in education and that's what's powerful about your story. So that's why I just, I love it. You're awesome. Thank you. And it's so powerful when kids start seeing us take those leaps. And I just, you know, I was an educator for a long time that wanted my everything to be tied in this beautiful Nordstrom bow every day, you know, and it had to be perfect. Yeah. And then I started realizing, you know, I'm never going to grow if I just keep, if I'm waiting to be, for everything to be perfect. And so when I started trying new things, you know, my students appreciated it. I'd come in and say, Hey, I just, I just found this really cool digital tool or this really, I just thought of this great idea. Do you guys want to try it? And they would always be game. And I think in a way, too, that kind of releases some of the pressure as teachers, you know, that, hey, we're learning alongside of our, our, our students. And it doesn't mean you don't plan and you don't prepare, but we can, <laughs> we can jump out there and take risks. And, and it's powerful when students see us do that. Yeah. Wholeheartedly. Absolutely. I, I am a huge fan of, I, I always phrase it, have you ever seen that movie, 10 Things I Hate About You? Yeah. Oh, oh my god. You have to go see it, Tisha. Come on. It's such That's a good one. classic, like two yeah. thousands teen girl yep. heartthrob drama. I love it. Um but at one point, uh there's the phrase said that is you have to sacrifice yourself on the altar of dignity. And 
I've always loved that line. And it wasn't until I was a teacher and a fair amount into my career that I really found how that applied to me. And I have to be willing to sacrifice myself on the altar of dignity and show my flaws and show my failures and say to my students, like, this is me and we're trying this. Let's go. And so that's like kind of a, a little mantra for me. Well, and to your point, I mean, uh, Tisha, a lot of your questions at the very end, which I was just eating up, was involving your community in your classroom. And so not only making mistakes as a teacher, but having adults come in and learn something new by being in a classroom again. I mean, there's so much value in inviting community in to be experts and share their insight with students, but that doesn't mean that they know everything. So having students teach them and having our community members fail and then be, learn something new in the classroom. I mean, I just love that experience and it gives them not only a learning experience, which is great, but it really shows them the incredible things happening in our classrooms that, that I really want to continue to voice to our community, how not only they can help us, but how there's so much magic that's going on in schools that, that really our community needs to see. And that needs to be a big part of us inviting them in. It's not just for our students. It's for everyone, our entire town. Yeah, absolutely. I think that has been one of the most powerful um, transformations that has happened in my classroom is inviting in an authentic audience. And every single unit that I would teach, I would invite in an authentic audience at the end of the unit for students to demonstrate mm -hmm. their learning. And I had different, I gamified my classroom. So I had the great food truck race was a semester long thing we did and I had master chef and I had the amazing race but they demonstrated what they what they learned and we would bring in staff we'd bring in local food truck owners restaurants chefs mm -hmm. and it. it was so powerful because kids could not wait to share what they had learned they were so proud and yeah. I think it's really amazing when staff comes in and they get to see students shine and maybe they don't shine, maybe that student doesn't shine in their class, but then they see the student shine in this other class. And um, just the authenticity of those authentic audience um, members asking them questions and then students having to answer them and maybe a food truck owner saying, I love what you did here. This is a great idea. Have you thought about this? If you were out in the restaurant industry and you had 30 people sitting down for dinner, this is how you could speed up that process. And you could, and, and so just having that authentic conversation. That's so real, you know, like. <laughs> right, it's powerful. Yeah. And yeah. they're able to echo then everything you've been teaching as the educator, right? They're not in there to be judgmental. I work with a lot of teachers that when they're, they're so nervous that when they invite people in, they're inviting criticism. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that has never been the case to me. You invite people in, they support your students and they're supporting everything you've been communicating. They're there to echo your message. And that's incredibly powerful as well. I love it. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's so important to open up our doors. I mean, just within even our schools. And it is scary at first, but I, I always use the example that, you know, when you go over to someone's house for dinner and they're... Um, their house isn't perfectly clean. Maybe they have a pile of mail on their counter or maybe even <laughs> like this pile of laundry somewhere, right? It's almost like, oh my goodness, like, whew, like I don't have, like, it's, it's almost like we relax a little bit because we realize yeah. that they're not perfect either. They, they mm -hmm. have a real life and, and that's okay. And so then you're yeah. maybe more likely to invite them over to your house because, you know, your house isn't perfect either. So I don't know. I think that there's something about when we open up our classroom doors and we allow people to see, see the realness, mm -hmm. then it, it helps us relax a little bit. And um, I think that we need, I just think that's so important as educators that we are, are doing that because what is ordinary to us might be amazing to someone else. And how are we ever gonna look, you know, we're not and gonna we, ever see those things unless we allow others to come in. And, and, go out too. You know what I mean? Like for me, I, I love having people in my room and I love just walking and exploring and seeing like eavesdropping, right? Like, Oh, what are they doing? Like, I wonder if I can borrow that slash steal that idea and run with it because I learn so much. I, I joke a lot. I see so many amazing ideas from other educators and I just take them and I mush them together, like in this ball of what I do. Right. And that's how we learn together. And that's how we grow. And it's awesome. 
So yeah. let's take a minute and see if we can remember after that whirlwind blur of a chat, any particular moment or conversation that really like stood out for you or made you want to dig deeper or side conversations you got into. Ray and I always joke that even though we're in the same Twitter chat, we must not be because we experienced two completely different chats because there's just so much content there. So what did you hear that maybe we missed? What was significant? So Ray, you want to go first? Oh my gosh. I am so sorry, Tisha. I loved your chat, but I was so hung up in the community one and the authenticity one. It was like, I only <laughs> answered two questions and then the chat was over. I don't know what happened. <laughs> so I was in this big long stream of chats with incredible teachers about how to authentically design lesson plans, just like we were talking about inviting the community in, giving students that umbrella of purpose. Um, I just did a webinar at 3.30 central time today on PBL and like creating authentic um, opportunities for students to learn. And so that like completely led me down a 35 minute, like just in that thread conversation throughout just like being able to periodically respond to other questions. And then it blew up all over again when we started talking about inviting the community in. So for me, I think the biggest tweets were the teachers that were asking questions. I think sometimes yes. we have Twitter chats and it's, you know, it's a great idea. Someone responds with, oh my gosh, I love it. I'm guilty of it too all the time. I'm like, oh, that sounds great. But then there's no further depth. And that, that really is an area that we need to work on, not specifically for Mastery Chat, but Twitter worlds in general. As we participate in chats, we don't just want good ideas. We need to dive deeper and really have that strong understanding. And I felt like that happened so much tonight. There were so many teachers looking for more information, seeking resources, actively uh, you know, reading the tweets and then saying, I have a question about this one element. Tell me more. And that's really how we grow. You know, you can do a Twitter chat, a 30 minute chat, an hour chat throughout your week, and you can say, okay, cool, I learned a new acronym, or, or okay, now I might have one idea to take back tomorrow. But when you actively dive in and create that network, I just think that's so powerful. So for me, that was something I just loved about the way Tisha, you created this chat, was you really allowed teachers to, to really dive in and gain a lot of information. That oh, awesome. that's awesome. That's awesome. I, you. There were a lot of follow-up questions and you're right, Ray. That's the best part of any chat is because then you're getting beyond surface. You're getting beyond the echo chamber that Twitter can be sometimes and you're actually getting to the, to the meat of it. Yeah. So Tisha, anything stand out for you? I'm putting you on the spot right now. Oh my goodness. I, you know, the game question, I just, I love games. And so there were so many games that were shared in that question that I'm like, wait, I haven't heard of that one. Wait, I haven't heard of that one. <laughs> and, you know, I, so that was like, there's a lot of follow up there where I'm just going to have to go back and like write them all Make down. <laughs> and then the authentic audience question for me is always really meaningful because I know what a difference that has made in my class. And so as they were, as people were sharing just ideas for either connecting globally or connecting locally with the community and those aha, um, you know, tweets were just really meaningful to me. And there are a lot of follow-ups I need to do because when, you know, you're going through and you're trying to, like, I don't even know that I got to, to more than like five tweets on legacy because the chat was over. I'm like, wait a minute, what happened? <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> I, um, so I have a lot of going back and looking, but yeah. I also love the, the questions like, oh, tell me more, those, and and people really wanting to dive deeper. I think that that is, is so powerful. Yeah. And it's just, I don't know, it was, it was amazing and I was so inspired and um, just really honored to be a part of this chat. So thank you so much for giving me it's the opportunity. happy place. <laughs> Tiffany, Wait, what about you? So there was, there was a moment in the chat that was actually really relevant to some things that have happened in, in my job in the last couple weeks or so. And that was about how you make the learning real and how you make it relevant, right? And I, it goes back a little bit. I'm going to talk about Dennis Sheeran, who we saw, Ray, you and I saw him together at um, one of the conferences we were at this summer. I don't in know. Indiana. I can't 
I just watched in this Indiana. chat last night, the Make It Real chat. If you yeah. guys have never been a part of hashtag Make It Real, it's on Wednesday nights at 9.30 Eastern. It's a really great chat. But anyway, that's all Dennis yeah. Sheeran. So, so he has this amazing, magical, if you will, way of finding what's relevant to students and just building math around that. And it applies to more subjects than that, but I'm a math teacher. And so for me, it was just like, there is so much realness and relevance right here. And that's really what I've been trying to push myself to do this school year is to make the math very relevant to my kids and their lives. And there has been some debate about uh, with, with some colleagues and not in a negative way, but just some debate about the balance between like the theory of math and the real world application of math and some conflict, if you will, in terms of I don't have time to bring all that stuff in. You know, I don't I don't have time to make all of that those connections. Where do I have time to actually teach the standards? And I've really been reflecting on that a lot lately and how when I make the time to connect, the standards go much faster because they actually care. And so that like that whole section of the chat, I was like, "Yep, I needed this. I needed this conversation. I need to keep making it real for my students." And it was just that was really good for me. I needed that tonight. So that was good. Good. I loved the ideas you had about some of your units. You were sharing out some examples of some of the units you're doing. And I, I was like reading through, I'm like, oh, that sounds so awesome. Tiffany and I will need to talk after our chat and actually catch up on all the things she's doing. The one we just started is they looked at me like I was completely insane because they walked in and I had written on my whiteboard, Life Coach Training Institute, right? And they're like, oh my gosh, this woman's crazy. But so we were talking about time management and how because they they're freshmen in high school and boy, oh boy, do they struggle with time management and how you can actually create algebraic equations looking at your time and how it's just a matter of solving for how much time do I have on homework? Oh, my gosh, it's wicked cool, right? You're going to love it. But yeah, they did look at me like I was insane. <laughs> but anyway, Tisha, I, ju I just want to say again, you're awesome. Thank you so much for being a part of this. I want to take just a couple minutes to plug the fact that you just, oh, hang on. Oh, guys, real quick. Um, comments have been wacky tonight, like showing up and then not showing up and then showing up. I popped a few up when I saw them, but I do want to shout out to Eric. Guys, I'm guessing that's how you say his name. He has been really, really active in the chat and really participating and I love this echoing the fact that that real world application is what makes them connect, right? And I, I just, I love, love, love that. And it's just really hit home for me in the last couple of weeks. There's a ton of other comments that I can't post them all, but Jeff reminded us that he worked in restaurant industry for 25 years, which I always forget, but I'm like, yes, Jeff. Jeff Kaplan's amazing, by the way, Tisha, you should follow him. Yeah. Um, so anywho, Tisha has a new book, Make Learning Magical. Um, it's Amazing from what I can see, it's on my reading list, like second down. I've got so many books to read. Um, so it's it's on my list and I can't wait, especially after this chat, they may have to be bumped up a little bit so I can see it earlier. But I do want to make sure that everybody gets a link to your, uh, I didn't do that right, a link to your, um, the book on Amazon so that they can just click that link and go. So as soon as I get off the live video, I'm going to pop that link in there so people can access it. You should follow Tisha on Twitter at Tish Rich, and you're going to get all sorts of goodness coming your way from her. So, Tisha, thank you for spending your time with us. Oh, this it's evening. an honor. Thank you so much. It's great to chat with you both. I know you've had a long day. The sun is setting over there, I can tell. <laughs> You're still at the coffee shop, so I think we should probably close this out, get you a chance to get home. Oh. Ray, thanks for being here, chatting with me. We always love to chat, my buddy Ray. Ray lives in Illinois, and I live in Ohio, so I never get to see Ray, and I love Ray. So I hope I get to see you at one of upcoming conferences. I don't yes. know where our paths will cross, but that would be amazing. We'll just It'll have happen. to compare notes, each conference. Are you going to this? Are you going to this? Yes. Stella Pollard. Do you know Stella Pollard on Twitter? Yes. She and I, we've been saying for, I think, two years now that we need to like be physically in the same place at some point. It'll happen someday. It'll happen. <laughs> It'll happen. All right, Tisha, thank you so much. Everybody who hung out with us tonight, thank you. Thank you for watching and listening to us gab on and on and on about how awesome learning and teaching is. 
So we will see you guys next week. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I just keep talking. Jeff Gargis, our, our buddy Jeff, is actually moderating next week. And he's talking augmented reality and virtual reality. So get your minds ready. We're talking tech. We're talking how it can transform learning. And Jeff will be right here a week from today doing all sorts of talking with us again. Right? Thanks, guys.